Dear students, I welcome you to another session of uh, Carbs Nutrition. And uh, uh, so far we have discussed about the development of uh, digestive system of carbs and the role of nutrients in this development. And uh, by now, uh, you, you must have known that at birth the calf uh, is functioning like a simple stomach animal. The only part of the stomach uh, which is actively involved in digestion is its abomism, whereas, whereas its rumen is non-functional. The rumen starts developing once the solid feed is offered to the calf and it starts consuming a little bit of it and uh, it is fully functional uh, after weaning, after we withdraw the milk feed. So this fascinating difference between the calf and the mature animal, it dictates, it creates the unique nutritional needs of the calf. So today we'll be talking about the nutritive requirement of the calf and what are the phases that we'll be discussing. So we can divide the the feeding phase of calf into, into three parts. The first one is liquid phase. The second is uh, transition phase, where the calf is uh, transitioning, where the calf uh, is having both some liquid feed and some solid feed. And then a, a ruminant phase, where the calf is weaned and it totally comes to the uh, solid feed. Uh, where it's when it developed enough to digest only the solid feed and no, no more required the liquid feed. Yes. So starting with the liquid phase, which is the very first stage uh, of taking care for the development of calf, for the rearing of calf, here the first most important thing is cholesterol, yes. which is rich in antibodies immunoglobulins you know and this cholesterol remember three three words three words three cues rather you have to provide it quickly within three hours the calf should be provided with the cholesterol and the quality of cholesterol also matters that it should have sufficient number of um, antibodies in it then uh, the second cue is quality. The second phase, the second thing is quality. Once I say quality, it has to have sufficient number of antibodies per unit of volume. Okay? And the third, the, uh, the the third thing which is uh, required is its quantity. That how much you have to feed. So 12 to 16 percent of the body weight, this cholesterol is required within three hours. Within three hours. And the second, uh, the part of it should be given within 12 hours. Uh, this is highly important. Why? Because with each pa passing moment, the not only the absorptive capacity of the intestinal mucosa reduces, it decreases uh, for absorption of immunoglobulins. Rather, the the digestive enzymes of calf at this stage they are not so developed that they should digest the immunoglobulin. So they are readily absorbed at this stage. So the colostrum, after colostrum, in this liquid phase, which goes uh, up till the two weeks, two weeks, the after colostrum comes the milk feeding stage. This is very important. The goal of feeding calf here is that whatever the weight the calf with, with whatever the weight the calf is born today at weaning it should be double than that yes. if it is 40 kg it should be 80 kg if it is 30 kg it should be 60 kg so it should be double the birth weight so how will that come that will come only through feeding so talking about the liquid phase Liquid phase, no, there are, first I'll talk about the nutritive requirement and this, then the second 
I'll talk about in the second part. What are the strategies? What are the methods? How we can uh, uh, meet this nutrition requirement of this calf? No, because you are a nutrition student. The, the, the strategies, the methods uh, that is more interesting subject will be for the former. But as a nutritionist, as a nutrition student, you must also understand what is the nutritive requirement of this calf. What does it need? So the nutritive requirement at this, the, the basic book which we follow is nutritive, nutritive requirement of uh, dairy NRC because uh, here, although we'll be talking somewhere about the fattening calf, the beef calf as well, but here our focus would be on the, on the dairy vehicles. So the NRC, NRC uh, for dairy, the nutrient, nutrient requirement of dairy cattle published in lately in 2001 that precisely give you the nutritive requirement of these calves. Once we say the nutritive requirement, we mean nutritive requirement of all the nutrients uh, like protein, then energy, then vitamins, then minerals. So the, the equations have been derived to meet the requirement of this calf. NRC has given you the equations depending upon the body weight and the weight gain and the weight gain. So the energy requirement at this stage, for say for example, if a calf, if a calf is, uh, you know, there are two requirements. One is maintenance requirement and the other is growth requirement. So for maintenance, the requirement of energy for a, for a 40 to 45 kg calf, this 45 kg calf, once we are talking of dairy, this is the birth weight of Frisian calf. Yes. In our crossbred as well as in our local breeds, the weight is, if it is a 35 kg, it is considered to be very good. But for a Frisian, it should be 45 kg. So for that, it, it, the, the maintenance requirement is 1.75 megacalorie or 1715 kilocalories per day. This is the requirement for 24 hours. This is maintenance requirement. And then for growth, since the, the calf is also growing, it has to grow. The requirement for maintenance is 2.8 or 2800 kilocalories. So if you add up, it is, um, please add up 2.89 plus 1.75, I think something over 4, 4.6 or 4.5. How, how much comes? 4.7 or 4.6? or 4700 calories per day. This is total requirement for maintenance and growth, growth for per day. So there are certain conditions like the very low temperature, once the frost is there below 4 degree and once the heat stress is there, during those stress days, the requirement of calf for the energy it increases. In winter it has to produce heat and of course then in summer it, it to, to get rid of the extra heat it has to uh, respire more for that energy is required. So that requirement is also given but for, for maintenance and growth requirement comes to be this 4600 uh, kilocalories. Now to provide it this is here you have to be focused to provide this much energy this is a liquid phase so please remember this is a liquid phase to provide this much energy how much and here what we have to feed is just milk is just milk now what is the composition of milk milk at an average uh, there is the energy content of milk and milk replacer, of course. The, 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 the energy content is different. Whole milk has got a more energy in it. 
and again the energy content of uh, 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 milk depend on its fat content as well higher the fat content more the energy content of it will be so you have to calculate that how much milk is to be fed to this calf to meet this nutritive requirement so this is energy requirement in terms of metabolizable energy why we take metabolizable energy in, in the large dairy we take net energy but here we use metabolizable energy because the heat increment is very negligible the gases gases are very negligible so we uh, take into consideration the metabolizable energy no coming over to the to the protein similarly the uh, the, the the protein requirement of calf for maintenance and growth for growth also varies for maintenance it is 30 grams 30 grams per day in 24 hours and uh, for for growth per day at an average this is 1.5 uh, or uh, sorry 150 grams 150 grams so it makes 180 grams per day now you have to calculate that how much milk you have to feed to your calf to meet this nutrition requirement that is as a nutritionist you have to decide and second is the owner's choice at what pace and what is it his plan to go ahead whether he, he want to dispose of the heifer at an early age or he wants to breed it for keeping it as, uh, as a uh, productive herd for producing milk so here i come over to the strategy what are the methods to do it one way is conventional feeding the second way is intensive feeding now what is conventional feeding? Conventional feeding is where the farmer is very very uh, miser. He is very concerned about the economy. He doesn't want to spend more. You must have seen in your villages that the farmer did, doesn't spare much milk for their calves. Just the leftover streams of the milk they are offered. Similarly the corporate farmer they are also not very concerned about uh, about this so they what they do is now what are the options with you what they do in conventionally they feed milk replacer and at what scale they, they they feed the calf at 10 to 12 percent of the body weight this is conventional and this makes you will calculate what does if a, if a calf is uh, 40 kg so that makes 4 liters 10 percent but this is conventional here in intensive the requirement is 16 percent of the body weight even beyond that and this is closer to nature this is closer to nature, once I say, once the calf is allowed to suckle his mother, he takes almost equivalent to 20% of its body weight. Now, in terms of dry matter intake, in terms of dry matter intake, if you calculate in that as well, the calf during first week can consume 1.5% of the body weight, of its body weight as solid feed, at solid you have to convert the because 85 percent of the water is of no use the calf you have to convert it to, into total solids of the milk so the, uh, the calf can consume 1.5 percent of the body weight as solids so if a calf is uh, 40 kg how much it needs the solids many solids 40 kg ka 1.5 percent you, you just almost uh, 1.5 kg no 40 kg 1.5 percent 0.6 kg 600 grams you have mm -hmm. to give it as a solids now 
the, the in the second week the requirement increases it, it goes to 2% of the body weight so here in, in conventional we are underfeeding the the aim is that we we want to develop the rumen of the calf and as early as possible the farmer starts solid diet within the second week they would offer the solid diet uh, to the calf and with the concept that by giving this solid diet and giving a restricted milk the calf would start eating solid and its human would develop milk is very expensive item if you calculate in terms of milk expenditure till weaning uh, for a calf it is it is very expensive you can sell it milk at 100 rupees uh, 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 but the milk replacer uh, which is a conventional way that, that doesn't cost you more than 40 rupees as far as the reconstituted uh, milk replacer is concerned and similarly the solid feed is also 40-50 rupees calf starter so the aim of the farmer in conventional feeding is to spend less economical feeding and develop human and to get it weaned as early as possible. So this is one way. The second way is to put the calf on intensive feeding. Now what is intensive feeding? In intensive feeding as I said we feed the calf at the rate of 16% of the body weight and moreover in economic in, in this uh, conventional feeding the composition the composition of the milk or milk or the, the milk replacer which we are giving it as an alternative of the whole milk is 20 percent cp 20 to 22 percent but in intensive the cp is 26 percent whether it is whole milk you if you can and this is so closer to the nature the cp content of whole milk, once I say whole milk, the milk of dam, the milk of cow, you know it contains 2.8 to 3% protein. And if you convert it, this is the same 28% uh, one, once we say the 28% that means on solid basis. Yes. This 3% is on liquid basis of the whole milk. So if we are feeding the 20% uh, uh, CP in milk replacer, we are not uh, giving the required amount of protein to the to the calf, and the fat content of this of this uh, in conventional uh, uh, milk replacer is 15 to 20 percent. The fat percentage doesn't matter much, and even if it is remained same in the in the milk replacer as as well. It would do. In the in the next few minutes, I would I would be telling you why why it doesn't matter much. But here, let us discuss what are the options here with the farmer. The option here with the farmer, uh, once we are talking of this this liquid phase, the option is either feeding of uh, milk replacer, which is the most economical. Uh, and it is it must have the, we, we will separately talk what should be the composition of the milk replacer it should have only the milk proteins because the calf at this stage cannot digest the vegetable proteins it is not capable to digest the, the starch in these two weeks particularly the, the calf is not able to digest starch of uh, vegetable origin it can digest only lactose which is a carbohydrate of milk origin. It can just digest that. The aim of adding starter uh, just uh, in the second week is that earlier, if the if the calf is uh, given a restricted milk, less quantity of milk, it would start eating starter, solid diet, and its rumen would develop. That is the, the farmer's aim or the conventional way of the objective of feeding conventional way. But here we are compromising on the growth of the calf. The second th thing which is uh, getting compromised is the, 
the research has told that the calves which are given intensive feeding on whole milk or the milk replacer having the CP content uh, 28%, 26 to 28% and 15 to 20% fat, they get early mature, they are bred earlier, they produce at least one mil, one month's extra milk you, to you. So here, uh, not only the health of the calf remains better, rather uh, at the first calving you get extra milk. The other heifer would mature and would be bred a month later than this calf. So here, the choice with the, with the farmer is either milk replacer, we were talking of that, or the, the second choice is saleable milk. Once we say saleable milk, that is whole milk, production of the farm, pasteurized or unpasteurized. The third category is hospital milk or waste milk. Now what is this? This is freely available at the farm. Some of the uh, animals, they are sick. Mastitis cases. Some of the animals are given some treatment. Some of the animals are freshly carved, so their milk is not saleable. That is called waste milk. But here you, you have to be very, very vigilant as a consultant of a farm that this milk, which is waste milk or mastitis milk, has to be very hygienic and has to be free from pathogens. So you have to be very vigilant to avoid any risk of diseases in these cows because these are sensitive animals at this stage. So the option, saleable uh, milk, the milk replacer, or the whole milk or saleable milk, one and the same thing. These two are the options with the farmers. So here, what are the benefits of intensive feeding is, you see, instead of, not only we are giving more concentration of protein, we are feeding 28% protein. And we are feeding at the rate of 16% of the body weight. So what would happen? The frame, the skeletal muscles of the calf, they would develop rapidly at a more pace as compared to the calf, which has not been given the required quantity of the, uh, of the protein. Because protein is required for development of muscles. Accord, uh, along with it, for digestion of protein, and for making it part of the tissues, putting it into the bones, in bones the protein is also deposited, and putting it into the tissues, the skeletal tissues, you need energy as well. So here, the energy is also required, but the fat content of 15 to 20%, if it is there in the milk replacer, it would do. Because we at this stage of development of calf, we need more protein and, and, and less energy. The over extra energy, if it is given, if, it, if we feed less protein, for example, 20% for example, protein, and we are feeding more fat, we, we go to the 28% fat, what would happen? The calf would grow, but it would put on more, more fat on in its tissues. Its frame would not develop, its skeletal muscles would not develop, its conformation would be would be shorter, would be smaller than the calf which has been which has been given full feed, uh, rich in protein as per the requirement of the body weight 1.5% in first week and 2% in the in the second week. So this is liquid liquid phase where you have to be uh, very much concerned about that to meet the protein requirement and energy requirement and then this this at liquid phase if we are intensively feeding the whole milk is is having everything it is having energy it is having protein but milk replacer nord is the commercial milk, the milk replacer are good but so far we have seen they are never uh, matchable with the whole milk uh, only one thing in milk is deficient that is iron so the milk replacer for manufacturers they claim that they are 
fortifying the milk with the with the iron. But I have heard. Uh, I, I can't tell you precisely. The iron content is rich uh, in buffalo. However, it is deficient in cow cow milk. Other than this, all vitamins, everything is there. Uh, no, the next comes is transition phase, where the conventional farmer has already started with the solid feed. Here we are also feeding the solid feed. It is not that in intensive feed we don't feed the solid uh, solid starter. It is not like that. But the problem is that here the calf is not eating that much solid feed. Because it is having a good uh, palatable, nutritious liquid feed, so it is just nibbling. It is just touching the solid feed. No, what will happen is what will happen here? Leave it, leave him here, leave him too. What will happen here? That here we can wean the calf earlier at an economical rate by expanding less in economical or uh, the conventional feeding. But in intensive feeding, we are getting more development. At what cost? With a, with, a bit, uh, with a bit late weaning. We are spending more, but that will be returned to us once the, this keeper would be bred, once it would get early maturity. So now come, coming over to this silent solid diet. Solid diet. Now this solid diet is a calf starter. Here we also need the highly nutritious, palatable ingredients, and here also uh, the the protein content uh, is required uh, from 18 to 20 percent, and it has to be provided ad lib because the calf is not consuming much. So you have to daily put a fresh feed in as much quantity in a, in a quantity which is consumable by the calf in a bowl. No, uh, the the experience would tell you, or you can calculate on the basis of dry matter intake as per the body weight or the dry matter intake which has which the calf has consumed. The, if, for example, the calf has consumed half kg, tomorrow you should offer a bit extra, 800 gram. To, if today he has consumed one kg, you should offer one a day, 1.25 kg. So that it can eat at, at liberty. So this is called at libitum feed intake. So here we have to give the the ingredients like uh, soybean meal, like maize, and there are so many other ingredients. Canola meal you have studied. Even wheat can be added. Even rice polishing can be added. But here the the some of the controversy is regarding the the fiber, when the forages should be added in the diet. Some people say that it should be given same time while offering starting in the third week, we should offer the some sort of fresh powder is not required, but the hay, a good quality hay should be offered at this stage. The purpose here is the development of the animal. Because you know the the solid contents, every type of uh, uh, the nutrient, every type of ingredient is having an effect on a different part of the human. The the solid feed, the starter feed, the uh, the ultimate end products you know are butyric acid, propionic acid, and acetic acid. The butyric acid, the main product of uh, is the product of the solids which is having an effect on the luminal uh, glucosa and developing it into papilla whereas this hay it, its end product product is acetic acid which has an effect on musculature so we need both muscles as well the the volume as well and the papilla as well for absorption of those those essence so the the research has shown that uh, the hay should also be offered. Nowadays, people are researching even on silage that whether it's at this stage silage can be offered or not. And this hay can be mixed as a TMR in the starter. 
after but uh, but after grinding it into you know in a smaller particle size, or it can be offered separately. Both have some benefits and drawbacks. We, if the hair particle size is longer, it accelerates chewing activity. But if it is grinded, it is easily consumable by the calf along along with the starter. And both where the research is being carried out that uh, some people there is some controversy. Some people say that. Uh, the addition of hay restricts the intake of starter. Once I say restrict, you must understand that the calf would eat much, uh, eat less, yes. because the hair energy is less and volume is more. The calf is just feeding uh, um, on it uh, to, to to fill the remaining whatever after having the milk feed. Now. The, the second thought is that we, we should start offering hay at some later stage at uh, closer to weaning. No, the, the advantage of uh, 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 giving early starter, I told you, is, is economical. No, where the calf should be weaned? For this Frisian calf, for this, for the, 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 the target is that uh, the calf should be consuming uh, 800, minimum 800 grams of calf starter for three consecutive days. Some people say the one kg, but in our local breeds, even it is higher. I have seen uh, even at the age of 12 weeks, the calves are not consuming more than 600 grams. Uh, so accordingly, uh, you have to wean it at 90 days age or the 800 grams for 3 consecutive days, whatever is the earlier. And how to wean, you reduce the 2 milk, two, uh, milk feedings to one level. For one week, you reduce it. Instead of giving offering milk two times, you uh, start offering it one time and gradually the, the, the calf it starts increasing its intake of solids and as that. So this is the transition phase where the starter as well as the milk is offered to the calves. The third phase is ruminant phase where the calf is just performing as a ruminant animal. However, there are very, very different things to be taken into consideration uh, for a pre-bred heifer, heifer after weaning, post weaning, what are the nutritive requirements? Now, at this stage, uh, we'll take it in the next lecture. But here, just to have an eye, to give you an idea, that we need to have development of the tissues and frame, and less of fat deposition. The advantage of having is it the development of proper memory tissue. The over deposition of fat in the memory tissue leads to a, to a stage uh, where the milk production is lower as compared to the heifers which are having more frame. Moreover, in, uh, in this case where we are precisely feeding the heifers, the, uh, to get the frame and the growth not having the over condition in this shape of more body condition score uh, uh, and having late maturity or less production, uh, you are also spending more on the feed. If you are putting in more fat and more energy which ration, you are spending more. So the uh, here, the average protein requirement is at this ruminant phase is 16% protein. Once I say 16%, 16% mean the, the dry matter on dry matter basis. Not like that you are feeding silage and you are feeding concentrate and uh, in concentrate it is something else. You make a TMR and calculate how much. So the heifer needs 16% of uh, crude protein and about 3000 kilocalories, 2900 plus kilocalories of metabolizable energy.